Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of This Week in Swim Run, all about Attila, the Swim Run World Championship 2021. Hit it. Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is a special edition of This Week in Swim Run for everyone who was asleep if you're in the U.S. <laughs> or, uh, you know, we're somehow out of cell phone reception and missed this year's edition of the Atala, the Swim Run World Championship. So Chipper and I stayed up. It started around 9 p.m. Past our, our bedtime. Time. Way past, <laughs> way, way past our bedtime. Um, I think uh, I... I don't know if I pulled the shortest straw or something, but actually I only slept like two hours. So we're recording this on Monday. The race ended this morning, basically yeah. recording this in the evening. And yeah, pretty much stayed up all night, took a two hour nap. And then when I woke up it was right after the pig swim. So I saw the race. I saw all the leaders and everyone finish awesome. um, from then on, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I mean, first of all, I thought the coverage on, so they had a, Dude, they had Otolo uh, had was a production. Uh, Facebook four different Facebook feeds set up because the Facebook could only handle a two hour live feed for some reason, so they had to set it up a, a certain way. But they had multiple. I mean, it was I was rather impressive uh, it was production. A production. I mean, I think there were definitely some uh, some patchy sections, but that was yeah. just. I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere trying to get four G connection. Like logistically, and- I was thinking, oh my god, yeah. this is. This is a lot of work, and you know they're doing a good job with it. So yeah, really, and shout really out cool to, to uh, Henrik Wahlberg and Jonas Ekman, who uh, were on our race prediction show. They were out there on bikes. Jonas was like running, following people and stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope Henrik's okay. It looked like either he dropped the camera a couple times, yeah, there or was some weird camera shot that was like, yeah, I was oh, like, I oh man, did he go down I on know. the bike? Uh, but you know, I think I think he's okay. But I uh, hope so. Yeah. So we thought for this show. You know, this week in Sormon style, we'll let you know what happened. We can walk you through what we thought was really interesting about the course and yeah, kind of how the race developed. So let's dive into the first race of the day. The women's race was a really great competitive race. Uh, It was awesome. I was really enjoying that. We'll walk through the podium first. Yeah, let's do it. So coming in at just off course record pace. Just over nine hours and 47 seconds, Team Arc Swim Run, Helena and Kristen. That's Helena Silverson and Kristen Larson. Yeah. They were team number 409. Yeah, previous, uh, Kristen, previous winner of Atala, current world record holder um, in the women's division. And yeah, they were pretty close to world record time. They looked super strong all Very day. Very strong. There's all these videos of Dan, uh, Daniel Hansen basically like on foot, just like running with them, taking his own. You know, they had their own publicist going, which is super <laughs> cool. They looked really strong once they got to Uta, strong on Orna. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, from from watching the race, I mean, it's it's just impressive. Like I remember texting you, just like, oh man, these these women are super the, strong. Like, they it was, it was they amazing. were after it. It was great. It was the first um, the first swim leg or one of the first legs. And you saw the men's have red bibs, mixed has green and then orange. And it was all, it was mostly red because the men had started first and then they added the mix. But you just see this yellow orange bibs just shoot in. And I was like, oh, 409. Like, oh man, they were, they were on it from the get go. So that was, that was really awesome. But they didn't really run away with it. Only a 10 minute and 40 second cushion uh, for second place. A uh, wild swim run West Coast. Yeah, came in hot, nine hours, eleven minutes, and twenty seven seconds. So, uh, a ten minute deferential on a on a nine hour race. Kudos. That's uh, they were they were putting pressure on the leaders. Yeah, sure. and also super cool that it was like a wild swim run team. You know, um, that was so awesome. It was great to see them shouting out such a such a great cause. And then, yeah, and in third place you had head swimming, which is Anna Hellstrom and Jenny Ramstead, super experienced multiple finishers of the race yes and they were uh they were just about five minutes back at, at that point from uh, from there but yeah the women's race was really interesting it looked like it really developed uh towards the middle of the race from 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 the feeds that i was watching <laughs> um but yeah i mean super it was, it was super impressive to watch i mean everyone out there i mean i definitely got a new respect for the course after listening to 
Oscar Olson's course walkthrough, but then actually kind of following along with the cameras and with the coverage. I mean, when they say technical, these are they mean technical. rocks. This yeah. isn't a, you know, a, a Jeep trail or something. These are rocks that they're just, I mean, yeah. rolling over like, like nothing, like they had roller skates on. And let me tell wild. you, if you were, you know, some sick bastard and you're playing the drinking game of taking a drink every time someone slipped on a rock on a swim <laughs> exit or entrance. You wouldn't make it 30 minutes. <laughs> you wouldn't make it. Yeah. And uh, just off the podium, teams uh, on the women's side, four through eight. There was only maybe 20 minutes separating all those teams. So you had a really c- competitive uh, race going on, sort of the race just off the podium there uh, with some former folks of the show that we had, including Isa- uh, Isabella um, came came in fifth uh, and some other ladies, Annika Weston, who we we know obviously from our... Uh, yeah, yeah. Annika, shout out to Annika Weston and Marie Anderson. Uh, team uh, Stromber- S- Stromgren, I probably screwed that up, but yeah, they're in a Strava club, so it was it was cool to see that see that pop into the feed. It was like, geez, it's a big day. Yeah, twenty women's teams in total finished this race. Yeah, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Now moving on to the mixed division, that race, and I think Henrik pretty much set this up for us was really really competitive there was a huge pack of people um essentially uh comes at no surprise to me yes you can speak for me in this and i, I, know I where can you're speak going. for chipper is you know our our personal favorite uh desiree anderson and her and her partner victor Dahl, who was his first time racing the world championship they not only won the mixed division but set the world record Bravo. Yeah, so that was Team Envil head swimming, and they just had an amazing day. They weren't in first for a lot of the day, and they really just charged charged on Orna and never looked back. In second place was someone else who has a dear place in my heart because she's in her Strava club, and mm-hmm. she's a total beast, so I get to see everything that she does in Switzerland. But Sabina Rapelli and Alexis Chardier from Team Envil Switzerland, they were, uh, you know... Anvil Switzerland head. On, it's, it's the Euro name. The you Euro got that. Actually, right. got to throw that's the, right. the Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't go the whole way. Uh, they had an awesome race, finishing second. I mean, in a super packed field. Essentially, after them, um, the third place team of Arc Swimmer Marika and Alexander Alexander uh, Kohler and Marika Wagner. Um, they were just about a minute and a half back. So from there, the next the next four finishers were all mixed teams. Um, so, so the mixed team was definitely a battle all the way to the end, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, I thought I thought that was one of the one of the cooler races, and I was following along on Instagram and seeing everyone's stories that were out there in the live feeds. Uh, Fanny, you know, three time guest of the show, two three time guest of the show, she had such a great uh, reaction. There's just a, a beautiful photo of her and Desiree. Former partners, former world champions. Mm-hmm. Desiree's moved to the mixed division, and they're just hugging across the thing. And it was like, it was such a great thing. Yeah. Fanny had a great live video where she was on Orno, I believe, following just as Desiree and Victor uh, sort of kind of made their move and, and moved on mm-hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. So it was it was such a, a great race, and that's pretty deep into the race to be saving. And it's it's hard to race knowing your move is so far out. Yeah, conserve, 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 and then mm-hmm. just stay in contact. Hope you have it contact. when it's time to go. Yeah, I mean, and if I can fangirl a little bit more on Desiree, I mean, she's amazing. She's an incredible athlete to, to win in the women's division, move over to mixed, and set the course record. I mean, it's it's an impressive achievement. And and one of the things they were doing, which was unusual for a lot of mixed teams, we've learned, is she would lead the swims and Victor would lead the runs. Mm-hmm. So typically, a lot of mixed teams is uh, one person is leading both. Um, so it's kind of cool that they they would switch back and forth. Yeah, Desiree's just such a strong swimmer. Amazing. And That's we amazing. shan't leave off the California swim run team, Mel Barto and Andy Hewitt of California Swim Run down in uh, Southern California. Uh, came in 40th place, 12 hours, 23 minutes on the dot. Mel commented, said that it was the hardest thing she's ever done. And this is coming from somebody that literally has swam around islands. Yeah. Uh, and that was Mel's first time at the Atala, the Swim Run World Championship. I think first and European Andy's style race. been there too. a few times. Yeah. 
yeah, so we'll we'll what a day. Uh, we'll, yeah, I can't a little wait foreshadowing. To hear more. We're gonna hear more. We're gonna hear more about her experience. Now, moving on to the men's. Um, watching this race from the beginning was actually super interesting because, you know, the start is everyone's kind of keeping it in their pants and they get to the beach and that's really where the race opens up. Mm-hmm. Um, the team that ended up ultimately coming in third, Hugo uh, Tormento and and Matteo Pul- Pulan. I'm sorry, dude. Sorry for Pulion. butchering your name. Um, Arc Swim in France. Like they actually, in the first swim, they had about a 300 meter lead. So they just took off. They just off. went to the on the gas. They just took off and you could see then the next the next group was essentially pretty quickly you could tell that it was Oscar Olsen and Adriel Young team uh Sim Cochin and Ark Swimmer and Frederick and Lars. Mm-hmm. Frederick and Lars are on that team. Uh, that they were they were kind of in the second pack and the way the race developed was really interesting because obviously Ark Swimmer in France got onto the rocks first, the first technical island which looked super technical. It actually reminded me of Vale Island a little bit. It did from the Odyssey race. And yeah. I was when I was watching that happen, I my mind just sounds like what happened to you. Click back to the episode that we had with Oscar. And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I'm good at the technical trails. And I mean, when he was saying that, he wasn't. It wasn't he, hyperbole. He was, it looked like he was floating over, yeah. over these so, super technical so trails. It was really interesting to watch because it was essentially the second that they got on land and it was it was essentially Frederick and Lars and um Oscar and Adriel. They just went they just started hunting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they just went hunting for these guys and and they pretty much made it to the second swim together. And then once again, Arc Swim and France were just like you know, world class swimmers basically were able, you know, yeah. were able to gap them again. But then once the race got to run Mara, which was really the first long swim, it's about nine K of running, where the first little bit is technical, then it opens up into a gravel road. Mm-hmm. That's where essentially Oscar and Adriel made their move. And they didn't really start looking back too much. They just started going and from then on they basically put on a clinic. They put the I mean they had down. some things that were to their advantage. The pig swim wasn't as, as piggish yes. as it could be. <laughs> um water was a little cold, but people didn't seem to be complaining about it. And yeah, I mean they just didn't look back and just dominated for the rest of the race, which super super stoked for Oscar. He's raced this race uh this Multiple event times. I think like four or five times on the podium, but never got that world title. And, you know, Adriel had won a world title, I think in the mixed division. Um, but yeah, I mean, those two guys just put on a clinic. Absolutely. Straight clinic. Absolutely. Set it, setting the, the course record. So, I mean, you, yep. you can't ask for much more than that. Overall, the day seemed just like a great day. Um, yeah. A few notable mentions, of course, for the U S based team, uh, coming in 32nd, it be me, 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 and Timothy coming in just over 10 hours with 10 hours, 5 minutes, 33 seconds. And actually, all the U.S. teams were kind of bunched uh, in the 30s, which is cool. So a few slots below that, we had uh, Beacon Blake. So Team Envil Baywatch came in at 10 hours, 19 minutes. And just after them, coming in 38th, the Swim Run Monks, Phil and Sean, 10 hours, 25 minutes, which we know, I think the 10 hour mark was kind of what, uh, what some of these, uh, U S teams were, were shooting to go sub 10 or around 10 Bravo guys. I think everyone did a great job. Excellent representing representation, uh, of, of swim run here in the United States. And, um, I think people, people definitely knew who some of these American teams were over there watching the feed. They yeah. knew that, the monks were on a certain training plan, and yep. they knew stuff about Envil I mean, Baywatch. Yeah, and it Beacon was really Blake cool. had been there a bunch of times. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it was cool that, uh, yeah, and they were actually all pretty much running together. So they kind of teamed up and were were covering some distance together, which was which was pretty cool to see that that camaraderie and everyone just just trying to get to the finish. Which yeah. it's a long enough day where I could definitely it's be like, it'd be nice to have you know a friendly face to to get through the you know the the twenty twenty ish k's at uh, on Arna. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, on the course, there was some pretty cool stuff. Like one aid station had like hot dogs. Another one had cinnamon buns. There was all these things, which I take a cinnamon there's that bun. Twix that we heard about. But I saw the Twix. Yep. It, it's so funny. They're literally, there's someone there like with a platter, like just a Halloween them. with single Twix just, yeah. and everyone goes by and grabs the Twix. Yeah. 
it's like proof that you that you did the swim or something. Yeah, because <laughs> you keep the wrapper, frame it when you get home. It's your yeah. So I would say I would say closing thoughts. Text. I think um, for the difficulties of the terrain and what they were trying to do, I think the broadcast was really cool, really fun to watch, engaging. They were in, you know, the crowd was into it. Immersive. Yep, like people were shouting out people that they knew. It was they were doing a good job of 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 uh, sharing information again in a difficult setting because you don't know where people are necessarily. There's bad reception some places. Totally, and, and I felt they did a really good job. You sort of had the headquarters who weren't on the field, and they were interacting with the fans. There was engagement with the Facebook comments about who are you coming to see, where are you watching from, who are you rooting for, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of stuff that really helps uh, swim run grow and and become more amazing. Yeah. And I'll say in terms of the race itself, um, I'm super sleep deprived. This is the first time that I've tried to stay up and not just watch the hype movies or yeah. try to catch the finish or whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, I feel like Oscar's episode where we had the course walkthrough, it just really enlightened me into what the experience is, but then also yeah. seeing it and also kind of like, you know, having listened to that show and prepped for that show, kind of knowing where they were mm-hmm. and what the terrain he was describing and actually seeing it, it was really cool to kind of put all those pieces together and kind of, yeah, you know, if you made me appreciate it a lot more. Absolutely. Like, I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, if, I encourage you, if you have not really watched a lot of footage or anything from the Swimmer World Championship to go on Attila's Facebook page and just kind of skip around some of these things and check out the course, I mean, it gives you a good sense of what the race is like and how the train. And when you hear it kind of just makes it a little bit of a deeper experience for it. I thought it was really cool. And also it properly scared the shit out of me again, as it should, <laughs> as it should, it should be. Something I saw to this be and feared. I'm like, this it is be not something a, to be feared. you don't roll out of bed and do this. No, I mean, maybe if you're like Jonas up. or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel the same way. I, I definitely, I'm still super stoked to do this race. It's yes. not like, oh, I can't. There's no way I can tow that line. Um, but it's going to be a day. It's going to be a day. And it, yeah, in terms of adventures, I mean, this one's definitely one, one to try to do. So we're we're really looking forward to trying to make sure we get our qualifying points and see if we can get in. And yeah, we hope you enjoyed this special edition of This Week in Swim Run, all about Atala, the Swim Run World Championship 2021 edition. Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for a newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music. And of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. (laughs) Finally, (laughs) you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. Yes. Or run to the finish line. Or run to the car. Or run to your car. Somewhere. Just keep running. Peace. 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 Peace.